Hey everyone, Kyle here and today we're learning about Metadynamics. Metadynamics is an algorithm which we can use to create 3D visualizations of the topography of the free energy landscape of some arbitrary system. In my case, the system that I use is a polymer which can twist in two different directions. So the X direction or a Y direction, and we can plot energy as a function of these two variables, which we call CVs or collective variables. A researcher or an engineer can use this to estimate at a glance whether a certain configuration of their system is stable or unstable. A low point in the landscape, a depression, corresponds to something that's stable, and something that's at high elevation in the landscape is something that is thermodynamically unstable. I find that the easiest way to explain how a metadynamic algorithm works is to use the computational sand analogy. So imagine that you have a big empty bathtub, or maybe it's like some mold or some surface or something. That's your free energy surface in the analogy and you want to get an idea of what its topography looks like. So what you do is you get your highly trained pet ant and you place him in the middle of that bathtub and you have him walk around randomly and deposit little uh, packets of sand as he goes and every place he visits will have a packet of sand. Some places he visits, he's going to fall into a depression in the mold or the bathtub, maybe if it's a bad bathtub, and he's going to spend more time in these depressions and he's going to stack up more mounds of sand underneath him. Now those mounds of sand that the ant drops are dropped at even intervals and they're of consistent size throughout. So the more mounds of sand that are in one area, that means the ant spent more time there and you can infer that that part of the surface was deeper. So what that might look like is the ant chooses randomly some configuration of the system, which is some arrangement of CVs, and that's like the starting point of a random walk. And from there, the ant is going to do a random walk around the surface exploring different parts and drop in little packets of sand, which are traditionally Gaussians. In my case, I actually model the little sand packets of spheres. So from here, the ant might choose to go this way. And then at this new location, the ant will solve for energy here and drop another parcel of sand and keep going and keep doing that random walk. So here, the ant will drop down a whole bunch. Now the catch is, if the ant is at a low elevation and wants to access a position that's at a higher elevation, the ant actually has to stack up sand underneath him in order to be able to climb to reach that new position. And so that's how, over time, uh, you're going to get that these depressions in the free energy surface actually fill up with sand. And as you let the ant wander around, eventually because it's a random walk, given enough time, the ant will explore most, if not all, of the free energy surface. And what you're left with is kind of like a negative space filling of this free energy surface. And now you can flip it upside down and get what the actual surface looked like in the original. And in our computational sand analogy, that means summing up all of the negative heights of all of the sand parcels. That will show you what the original topography of the surface looked like, which is the one that the ant was exploring. We also have a few algorithmic parameters which we can play with or tune to affect the accuracy of the landscape that we get or how quickly we can yield a landscape. And usually speed and accuracy are inverse of one another. And my implementation actually allows you to tune these parameters using the last two arguments over here. And these are related to the random walk step size and the number of total random walk steps you take. Where if you choose a smaller step size and more steps, you're going to get a more accurate result, but it takes longer. So this is what it looks like with a relatively large step size and a smaller number of steps. We can see that we have a clear picture of what the landscape looks like, but if you decrease the step size and increase the total number of steps, you can get a landscape that's much more accurate and true to the true landscape shape. The only downside is it takes significantly longer to run it. This video was made as part of MIT 316 Mathematics and Computation for Material Science and Engineering under the supervision of Professor Craig Carter and teaching assistants Lauren Cooper and Pooja Reddy. Thank you for watching.